Greetings and welcome everyone to Ironclad Tactics. Ironclad Tactics is a strategy card game, or strategy collectible card game rather, by Zactronic Games, who are the creators of Space Cam. And if you don't know what Space Cam is, well then it's pretty much this. Wait, but did that just thing just flip? Wait, hold on. No, no, no. Okay, so wait. Now it's... Oh, it's flipped. Now it's... Okay, so now it's three boobs. Three boobs going. Um, oh, oh. Yeah, it's, um... It's, it's something alright. Now, if you've ever played Space Cam, you'll know that that game is incredibly brain melting, and if you don't like your brain melting, then congratulations on finding this video, because Ironclad Tactics does not melt your brain. 100% guaranteed not to melt your brain. Actually, no, that's probably going to get me sued. It's 99% guaranteed not to melt your brain. How about that? Now, in the game of Ironclad Tactics, we start off with this sort of um, map, I guess, of some unknown country. Like, what is this? What is this? Like, middle of Egypt? Yeah. Oh. Um, and so, where you start off is where you start off is Shadek, New York. Now, this area is basically the tutorial, and then you'll move on from there and move on to a next level and next level, and so on and so forth. And this is generally just the level select sort of thing. It's pretty interesting how it's done here. It's very basic, not really interesting actually. Don't know why I said it was interesting. It's not really, it's very basic. Um, but you'll notice that there are certain stars on here. That means you've unlocked all your cards. This is how you get your cards in this game, which is where I was going with that C segue. Uh, so you see here, it says cards unlocked and you've got a certain amount. And that's to try and tell you that, and that's to try and tell you that if you want to get all the cards, you'll need to do something. That, um, so you see here, it says I'm missing two. If we go there, and then we go over here to see cards unlocked, it'll tell us what the requirements are. So we can get four cards for winning the story, which is essentially just playing single player and winning. Um, so you don't need to win the whole entire story to get it. <laughs> uh, the story challenge, which is just do something or other. Like, it's a specific thing, so it's trample five enemy infantry, so just walk over them. And then story challenge, defend the Jefferson statue. We can also do that. And then play skirmish, which is the online mode. Um, which I don't believe I've actually ever done. So let's see if we can do that. Could we maybe do that? Nope. It looks like that is actually requires 2v2, and it looks like, um, well, yeah, uh, I don't think I'll be able to do that considering the fact that I'm in Australia, and multiplayer games in Australia are pretty much always dead, so... Yay, those are cards that I will never ever unlock, so hey, for you completionists out there, this isn't the game for you. Well, at least if you're in Australia anyway. If you're a completionist and in Australia and you're trying to 100% this game and get all the cards, sorry, mate. I know how you feel if it makes you feel better. Anyway, so let us begin. Oh, actually, no, sorry. Hold on. I should. I'm getting ahead of myself. So now, your cards that you unlock from doing such a thing will go into your deck, which you can change and create new ones. So I've got my deck here, and it's Nickelback. You can name this whatever you want, so I chose the best band in the world, Nickelback. I was considering just doing the best singer in the world, and that's Justin Bieber, but I figured, you know what, Nickelback. Yeah, I think just because there are more people there, they're more worthy of the name of my deck. So anyway, let's, so we can create multiple decks. Actually, I suppose I might as well just create, um, save deck, save deck and exit. Um, so I guess I'll just, um make two decks, name the other one Justin Bieber. There we go, so now we've got two decks, one for Nickelback and one for Justin Bieber. So now, let me just uh, show you how you create your deck. What you do here is you basically just look at your cards and then put them in there. Uh, in the bottom here, it'll tell you how many cards you're allowed and how many factions you're allowed. So if you've got, say, the Americans, that's one of the factions, and I believe there's also um, another faction you can get. Actually, I think that's later on. Uh, it's another faction you can get, which is one or another or something like that and it will count towards your another faction and then you'll get more factions and more variety and stuff like that and then you'll you, know, you can only have two factions at any time i believe um as for cards you can only carry up to 20 in your deck at any given time so you want to make sure that you select the right amount of cards and have a nice balance because um every time you do start a mission your cards are shuffled or sort of shuffled they're randomly sort of generated i guess um, or randomly selected, that's actually a better word. They're randomly selected from your deck, so you don't know when your cards will come out. So you've got to make sure you have a nice even amount, otherwise uh, you may be wishing you had more field repairs than you do um, prototype ironclads or whatever. 
So, uh, let me just talk about this. This uh, prototype ironclad will take up 1 AP and this all that. And this is sort of like, um, you're just general unit sort of thing. They don't really do that much and you can't equip parts to them. Uh, parts are these things over here. These are your parts. These take AP to put on your character and they will be used to, um, sort of give them attack power because I don't actually think there are any, um, enemy, any characters on here that actually spawn with parts. So that's pretty interesting, something about this. You don't actually get any car, or, sorry, don't get any weapons on your characters. I, I think, um, that's enough of the talk about creating decks. So let's just, um, move on to this and then we'll use our Nickelback deck. So this is how the story starts out. It'll tell us something that we need to do, like defeat the Confederates, and then we will do just that. So I've got my veteran rifleman here, and I've just and I've got four. Act I, can I pause this at all? I want to want to try and discuss things more. Nope. Okay. So we're getting given certain cards, like say this rifleman. He'll cost three AP, and from our action point pool down here, we will lose um, three AP. Well, not lose, rather, we'll spend that. So we have just spent that, and now we no longer have that because we just spent it, you know. I'm sure you understand that simple concept. Um, so we can do that for all of our cards. All cards will cost AP, by the way. So, say here, this field repair, that will cost three action points to use. Uh, this Zambulon's cat, that will cost one AP to use, and we can equip that. that uh, now you notice this little, like, sort of, like, uh, black and yellow sort of line on here? That is to indicate that it's um, a part you can equip, a part is what they call it in the hood, yo. Um, so, what you do with that is you just put it on your character, or your... Uh, I believe these are called... Oh, God, they've got a specific name, but I don't even actually remember it. Oh, dear. Um, Ironclad. Wow, it's the name of the freaking game. How did I forget that? <laughs> it, it, so, these Ironclads... Yes, I eventually remembered their name. Um... They are used to um, go from one side of the screen to the other, and you can equip parts onto them. So, no ironclads will spawn with weapons. Only um, these humans will spawn with weapons. So you got like these um, veteran riflemen and the other riflemen and stuff like that. They will spawn with weapons, but the um, ironclads will not. And so there's this sort of like um, risk versus reward because you see here these points here that say VP. Um, that stands for victory points, which basically means that if you get this thing to the other side of the screen, you will get that amount of victory points. So you see here, we've already got two VPs there. Oh god, uh, I need to put something down here. There we go. Alright, now we got something on him, yeah. Okay, so now you see, we've got... I just put in a character here on this left side, and then we want to put him all the way to the right side. Doing so will give us two VPs. Once we get six VPs, we will win the match. That is our end goal. I need to use a repair thing. I don't have one. Bulls. Hmm. I done fucked up. Alright, so, um, yeah, so that is our main goal for this game. We just want to get all of this VP to six so that we can win and make sure that they don't get any of our, don't get any VP in us because that would be bad. I guess I'll put that guy up there. Um,. So now, so that is just the general goal. There are certain things to make it more um, sort of interesting though, like um, there are things you will have to do in the game to unlock more cards, and as you unlock more cards, it'll get more challenging. And in certain levels, there are more stipulations to victory, like um, you'll have to be in this specific area in order to win, or you'll have to um, uh, d protect a specific statue or something like that, stuff like that. So it's not always just get this to the other side, but that. That is generally just a good way to get VP. Um, so, so there is quite a bit of variety when it comes to this game, which is pretty cool. The only real problem I have with it is the fact that, well, when you play multiplayer, you, like, have to play multiplayer in order to get all the cards. As far as I know, I actually haven't tried out the skirmish myself, because I think it is multiplayer, I think. So, um, so it may not be, and I may just be dumb. If so, then, oh well, I've got pie on my face. But if not, well then, then I was right in saying that this game requires multiplayer in order to, in order to 100%, and that's just pretty fucking dumb in my opinion. Because I shouldn't need to be forced to play multiplayer to get everything unlocked in the single player of the game. Why is playing multiplayer, why is, what, what do I get from playing the multiplayer of a game? Why, like, why does that help me in the single, like, that shouldn't help me in the single player, I should just be able to get everything in the single player. If I get, like, 
Everything I unlock in I unlock in multiplayer should just be for multiplayer. Everything I unlock in single player should just be for single player. That's how it should work. Instead, we've got to play like all these different modes and shit. And I I don't like it. Just mostly just because I can't actually play it. I probably wouldn't have bit have such a big problem with it if I could actually you know play it. But me being in Australia has limited the player base quite a significant amount. All right, so now they're going to get two VP to to their side so that they can, um, well, because they're going to the other side, rather. Oh, that's a shame. Now, the actual, um, like, graphics here are actually pretty interesting. They're very nice. They've got this, like, um, I don't know what you'd call it, but they've got, well, actually, I know, I do know what you'd call it. I'd call it cartoony. They've got this real cartoony look to them, and it's really quite adorable. It's got this nice sort of, um... I guess if like if you look at the more of the character models rather than the actual ironclads themselves, it looks a lot like um, Penny Arcade. It reminds me that like that's what it reminds me of most. A Penny Arcade sort of style of um, drawings. Like when I look at their facial structures and everything, I think Penny Arcade. It's got these really well defined like cheekbones and stuff like that. I'm not actually sure. Um, well, it's also got these like ridiculously rounded things and emphasis on head things. Things. I just called heads things. I completely forgot what the name was for th for. Oh my god, wow. I'm brain farting massively today. <laughs> but yes, those big round things on top of our body. What are those called? I don't know. Um, yes, those things. Okay, oh, maneuver up. There's another part, uh, part thing you can use. A part, sort of, I guess. Um, it can allow them to move it up in the grid. So that's pretty useful. Uh, let's go back back to this. Uh, let's go here. Alright, continue using Nickelback. Alright, yeah, so you saw there he's got a big nose guy and stuff like that. So, that's, yeah, what I meant by that before I fucking brain farted. Also, so here, this is sort of like part of what I was talking about when it's like they've got certain stipulations, but this isn't really part of it, but it kind of sort of is. Basically, this is, um, this little thing here, this is called, uh, a flag. I'm sure you know what that is. Uh, basically, what happens when we stand on the flag, though, is not quite like not quite like what you would expect for a flag to do. Rather than just being patriotic, it gives us more action points. So you see here, in the corner. Oh, this is going to be annoying to try and multitask because I've got to explain things while actually playing the game because there's no pause button. Is there a pause button? Oh, there we go. There. I guess we could do that. I guess. I was hoping maybe we could stay in color, but oh well. I'll give what I'm taking. So you see here, down in the bottom left, we've got action points. We've got a one base, so every time we take a turn, that will give us one action point. And then because we're standing on a flag, or rather because we have this little dude standing on a flag, we're, we're, we're not. We're just sitting on our computer chairs, or whatever, wherever you're watching this, whatever. Uh, because that guy is sitting on a flag, he is giving us plus po 0.5 AP. So, so every two turns, he'll give us essentially one full um, AP points. So you see there, um, it just went up half and then it, then it stopped. That's because he was already halfway there and such. Alright, I need to, hmm, could I maybe, I guess I'm going to have to maneuver this guy downwards in order to keep him alive. There we go, that's good enough. And then I guess I could move him back up. Well, actually, no, I won't move him back up, never mind. I actually want this guy to just go to the end instead of um, being used to uh, get AP. Um, Oh jeez, they were messing me up. Yeah, so the goal that you want to do here is you want to get your little units onto the AP flags and then you want to leave them there and keep them there so that you gain the advantage of AP. So um, AP is, like I said earlier, what you use to spend on cards. Now both of you, both you and your enemy have AP. You can see it up in this top left, your AP and their AP. This is, you can use this to your advantage because if they have no AP that means you can make more of a rush and just have everyone move on out. But if you don't, ha but if they have very high um, AP and you have none, you might want to take a more defensive sort of route. So and just keep your guys staying still because they may come and attack you, and it may be better to have all of your fo all of your groups like focused up together. Like you saw me earlier on using the maneuver ability, um, it may like in certain cases where they're just like storming you, it may be better to have like all your units maneuver up here, and instead of just. Um, being on different planes or grid stuff. Oh dear. I'm messed up. I'm gonna lose this one, I believe. Yeah, this does not look too good in my favor. Not too good at all. Oh well. Alright, let's put that guy there. 
Hopefully he can kill him. And we've got this little thing here to worry about as well. Alright, I'll put you there. Put um, Zebulon's count on you. Speed you up. Now Zebulon's count will allow them to move two spaces at once instead of just the one. So you see how this guy, he just moved one space. Now I'm going to pause him there so he doesn't move. So now, so now that I've got that done, he won't move from that spot. Although he can still die, so that's no good. <laughs> Hopefully, I wish he would be immortal. That'd be great. Um... There we go, so they, oh great, he's dead. Oh well. Oh well. Easy come, easy go, I suppose. Um, yeah, so you can pause your units and uh but the riflemen cannot give you victory points, so that's something to consider. So they are generally make for good um sort of like fodder, I guess, for when it comes to placing them down on these AP or just trying to temporarily delay them. So that's something to consider, I guess. Alright, keep him there. Now I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. Hmm. I guess I'll put another rifleman over here, just try to keep him down. Ah, uh, jeez, this is bad, this is bad. Oh, see, also, what's really bad here is that ironclads can just trample all over these people. So if he didn't shoot me, this ironclad right here would just walk over me. And I, I do not mean, like, metaphorically, I mean literally would walk over me. Yeah, it would be bad. Okay, let's put the musket on this guy. Hopefully, oh dear, can I win this? Or can he win this? Actually, wait, which side am I on? I forget. Am I on left or am I on right? Oh, goal. We're gonna, we're gonna get two. Oh, they won. Oh. Hey, I got an upgrade anyway. Yay. So now, so even though I didn't get a win, I still got managed to get something. That's pretty cool. Click anywhere to add your th cards. Cool. Um. So now let me just see. Puzzle, solve a puzzle using a fixed set of cards. Skirmish. Join. Alright, so now... What is... What happens... What happens here? The right team is empty. Okay. The left team is... Okay, what am I supposed to... How am I... I guess this is... What is this for? Play skirmish against other players using custom decks on a balanced map. How? Okay. Ravenvale95 has joined their lobby. Hello? Is anyone out there? I'm trying to play video games with... Oh, hold on. Video games with you? Wait, why was there a question mark there? There sh shouldn't have been a question mark there because it was not a question, but rather it was in fact a, a statement. I, had to, I don't know why I brain flooded there. So, do not try to answer that question, because it was not a question, but rather a statement, as I previously... Um, what is the word I'm looking for, guys? Here, yeah, guys, guys, what am I looking for here? Previously explained? I guess. That's good enough. Uh, oh well, so it doesn't look like anyone is going to play this online with me, which is a real shame since poop. Poopy. <sighs> no, seriously, come on, guys. I know someone out there owns this video game. Come on. <sighs> Fucking Americans and all that not being awake when I want to play video games. Or Australians not owning this because because they're Australians. Ah. So this is um sort of why I'm against card unlocks being trapped beneath a you must play multiplayer in order to unlock them. Because no one's playing the multiplayer. Does anyone know this game has multiplayer? You guys know this game has yeah, believe it or not, this game does have multiplayer. I mean, it doesn't look like it right now. This looks like single player in a lobby. But it's, but it's multiplayer. Jesus Christ, I haven't waited this long in a lobby since I tried playing Rage's online multiplayer. My god, no one was playing that at all, by the way. Uh, so this map is rather... You know what? Fuck it. No. This is it. Okay, so let me just talk about, let me just talk about the fucking options, then we'll be done. <sighs> Random 1v1. Does that maybe do it? Matchmaking. Matchmaking, come on. Come on, searching for an opponent. No! 
Nope, no one playing it. No, nope, no one's playing it. Never mind. Fuck that. Options. Let's just talk about options instead because no one's playing it. So let's just fuck. So, what have we got for options? We've got sound volume, which is basically just your regular sound. And your music volume, which which controls the music. Voice chat, which is useless because no one's playing it online, so no one's ever going to talk to you. Z is team chat, X is all chat, which... How's the mic test work? Oh! There's my voice. Hello, voice! Oh, it's good to know that my mic isn't muted, I guess. Ah... Uh, Usage and crash report, uh, force offline mode, sure, force offline, I think that's what everyone has done, they've all forced it offline, so now no one's playing it, whatever. Ironclad Tactics is a pretty cool card game that you can play single player, but if you try to play a multiplayer, then good fucking luck.